So I came across this article on yahoo.com and the article was titled six ways to trick your brain into actually liking your workouts. And to me, that title was pretty compelling. And just like a lot of you, sometimes, sometimes I don't have the motivation that I wish I had in order to go out and put in the work. Some days are just more tricky than others. And the article points out that from a neuroscientific perspective, our body looks at these hard workouts, these long efforts as a threat to its homeostasis. So obviously our body is going to be working against us because it would rather we just do nothing and sit on the sofa and just maintain an even keel. But you know, we don't get anything done if we just do that. So we're gonna be giving you some ways to trick your brain so you can get out there and take care of business. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know, generally I'm not a fan of motivation as a reason to do something. The motivation is secondary to discipline and whether or not we have motivation, it doesn't matter. If we're training towards something, we need to get out and do it whether we feel like it or not. That's where discipline comes in. And oftentimes, when we make ourselves get out there, when we use discipline to get out there and run our workouts that are on the schedule, we actually become motivated to continue after we've started. So actually, motivation isn't necessary if you have that drive to get started. But we're gonna be talking about ways to stoke that drive to get started. Oh, and this is also the weekly running and training vlog, where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I wanna hear about your successes, and I definitely wanna hear about the setbacks. I actually had a couple of setbacks last week, mainly because of Hurricane E, and all the drama that it brought, but we'll get into that. So the first way to trick your brain to actually liking your workouts is a reward raffle. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to get five pieces of paper and I want you to write down a different reward on each piece of paper. And it could be anything. It could be new running shoes, although that seems a little bit excessive if you're gonna be doing this on a daily basis, but it could be some kind of food treat, maybe a new water bottle. I don't know. You could pretty much do anything and it doesn't have to be buying something. Although if you're looking for an excuse to buy yourself something, the reward raffle is a good way to go. And here's how we're gonna make this sustainable, at least financially sustainable, because you're gonna put those five pieces of paper with the five rewards into a bowl with 15 other pieces of paper with nothing written on them. So you're not necessarily going to know that you're going to get some kind of tangible reward. And this little trick is playing to your brain's obsession with uncertainty. And this is how it works. Your brain thrives off of unexpected and intermittent rewards. And this is because of dopamine. Okay, so if we know that we are going to be getting a certain reward at a certain time, our brain releases a certain amount of dopamine and that makes us happy. That's why we like getting gifts. But, and this is the kicker, and this is why it works. If your brain doesn't know that it's going to be getting a gift or it doesn't know whether it's going to be getting a gift, it releases a significantly higher amount of dopamine. And with that higher amount of dopamine, you will be incredibly more motivated to complete the task at hand. In this case, going out and crushing your workout. Okay, the second way to trick your brain into actually liking your workouts is to set mini goals. So obviously, our goal to go out and complete a workout is the goal that we're having a hard time finding the motivation for. So you break it up into the small units possible. So for example, let's say you are going out and you have 12 400s on the schedule. Just break it up. First of all, you're gonna have the warm up, then you're gonna have the first 400. That first 400 is the first goal, unless you wanna make the warm up a goal, but running at a crazy slow pace, just getting your body primed doesn't really seem like something we need to set a goal for. So let's keep the first 400 as our first goal. Now it's a very similar process as the dopamine releasing in tip number one, in that when we complete our first goal, that micro goal, that one 400, our brain is going to release a little bit of dopamine and it's going to give us that pleasure. It's going to give us the motivation in order to continue to do the next 400 because we've already got that hit of dopamine from completing our first goal, that first mini goal. So we're going to be more motivated to do the second and then the third and then the fourth all the way up to 12. It's practically magic, motivational magic. But this works in the long term too. Your brain is actually going to get used to getting those mini hits of dopamine after each small goal. So even though you were dreading the workout on that one day when you were breaking up those 400s into individual mini goals, the next time you go out and do a workout, out, it's not going to be as bad. Your brain's going to know that that workout brings a little hit of dopamine and it won't be as hard to make yourself do it. Okay, the third way to trick your brain into actually liking your workout is to use visualization. And we've all heard the cliche, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, it's a cliche because it's true. And there's actually science to back this up. There was a study that asked participants to visualize something positive about their exercise or something negative about their exercise. They then had a control group to visualize anything, anything they wanted, just not to do with exercise. And once you know it, the participants that visualized something positive about their exercise reported higher feelings of motivation to complete that exercise. Pretty fascinating. But here's the more fascinating thing. The participants that visualized something negative about their exercise also reported an increased level of motivation to exercise. Now, it wasn't as strong as those that visualized something positive, but it was much more strong than those who visualized just something else, something random, nothing to do with their exercise. And visualization isn't just all in your head. You can put pictures up. You can actually draw something, a diagram, showing the progression on the way to your goal. So let's say you have a half marathon planned two months away. You can 
each, each run off on your visualization diagram, showing yourself getting closer to the end goal. Brilliant, it's a brain hack. The fourth way to trick your brain into actually liking your exercise is to tap into your why. And we've all heard about this reasoning for doing things. Simon Sinek talks about it all the time. Gotta have purpose. And when you tap into that purpose, when you're not feeling motivated, it's gonna give you a little kick in the butt. It's gonna remind you why you are actually doing something. And perhaps you haven't actually thought about what your why is when it comes to your running, when it comes to your exercise. Is it health? Is it competition? Is it being a good example to your family? It could be anything. Just tap into that. Recognize what it is, the reason why you wanna get out, put in the work, even though you don't feel like it, and that will stoke your motivation and allow you to get out the door and do the thing that you might not want to do. Although refer back to the comment at the beginning of the video where I said that motivation will come once you get started. Remember that, that's a biggie. The fifth way to trick your brain to actually liking your workouts is to listen to music. And like this isn't gonna come as a surprise to anyone. Music and workouts go hand in hand. We all know that when we're listening to a jam that really pumps us up, what it's actually doing is making us more motivated to get out there, to go for that run, to go for that workout, to start the race. And of course there is a study to back this up, even though it's something that we all inherently know. But there was a study that showed that when people listen to motivating music during sprint intervals, they reported higher levels of enjoyment after the workout than people that listen to podcasts or people that listen to nothing at all. So not only does music boost your mood, it also increases endurance and decreases perceived effort. And I can't think of anything much better than a bump in endurance and a reduction in perceived efforts when I'm running intervals. And it's going to come of no surprise to anyone that the reason music pumps us up before a workout is because listening to the music actually releases dopamine. And actually what we've been talking about is just how to release dopamine. I'm just telling you different ways to do it, but it works. And the sixth way to trick your brain into actually liking your workouts. And we've already referred to this earlier in the video and that's to just suck it up and do it anyway because action creates motivation. It is not the other way around, contrary to what we might believe. Now it may seem counterintuitive, but you are actually tricking your brain to release dopamine, which makes you more motivated by starting to exercise and that starting of exercise triggers the dopamine which makes you more motivated. It really is more logical than I just made it sound. Now the article suggests that you prime your brain, you prime your brain to get ready to go out for your run, to run your workouts by committing to just five minutes of warm up. And the article suggests dancing around your living room or doing some sun salutations and make sure you're doing those to a really good song. And those short bouts of movement are actually going to increase the amounts of dopamine that are released into your brain and with that dopamine comes motivation. So what do you do to stay motivated to get out the door when you just don't feel like it? We've all been there, right? There isn't one of us that just wants to get out and work hard at our running every single day. Sometimes we're tired. Sometimes there's other stuff we want to do, but I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments. I had a pretty good week of running. It started off on Monday. Monday was a beautiful day. Started off with 11.1 miles. Now it's mostly a very easy run, but I did pick up the pace and I did eight 30 second strides towards the end just to get my legs turning over and it ended that run feeling pretty good. Tuesday was my first workout of the week and on Tuesday I knocked out 10.6 miles. And now that I'm looking back over what I did this day, the workout part of it was very small. I warmed up for four miles. Then I did six 800s with 400 meters recovery in between. And then I cooled down for 2.3 miles. So really the amount of hard running I did was pretty minimal, three miles total. But my perceived effort of my workouts and my running in general has been a little higher recently. So honestly, I was glad to just get it done. Wednesday was my day off this week and it was actually pretty handy that I had a scheduled day off on Wednesday because Wednesday is the day that Hurricane Ian hit Florida. And I just want to thank all of you that checked in on me to make sure that me and my friends and my family were okay. The area of Florida that I live in got extremely lucky. We were forecast to have a direct hit, but the storm went just slightly south and my area was spared something horrible. Those poor people in Fort Myers really got hit hard. Thursday I was actually able to go out for a couple of miles. I knocked out 6.5 miles and I wanted to go out and do some post-storm recon. And I think the winds at that point were still gusting up to about 40 miles an hour so it was pretty blowy out. And I actually included three miles at tempo pace during that run. But to be honest it was a bit of a half-assed effort. There was a lot of stress to do with the storm and I just really wasn't feeling like putting in a solid effort. But I was happy I got three miles at tempo pace or close to tempo pace. Let's say tempo effort. Friday was 10.2 miles. Very easy just going out and running easy. Can't really say more than that. Followed by another easy run on Saturday, but Saturday was my longest run of the week. I knocked out 15.1 miles and I was pretty happy to get up to 15 miles. It's been quite a long time since I've run that far with my plantar fasciitis and I was still feeling it after that run, but it's not nearly as bad as it was like a month ago. So I'm hoping I can just keep it where it is and maybe get better. Well, obviously I want it to get better, but it's funny how when it's so bad kind of resets my expectations. Friday was an absolutely solid week to wrap up my week of running. I went down downtown Sarasota, met up with my local running group and I ran 12 miles with the team. And because I only get to run with them once every couple weeks, it is always a treat and the miles just slip by. One thing though, one thing that I didn't know beforehand, but I found out on the way was that when we ran out to Lido Beach Park, they were on a boil water notice for the hurricane. So I couldn't 
use the water fountains at the halfway point of my run. So obviously I finished that run being a little thirstier than I usually do. Still, it was an absolutely solid run and I wrapped up the week with 65.56 miles, which is about 105.5 kilometers. So I've got to say, it was a solid week for me. I'm very happy with it. Oh, and if you are still here, why don't you go ahead and drop the cobweb emoji in the comments just to let me know that you have made it this far in the video. And of course, I appreciate you. If you're still here, you are putting in the time and that means a lot. Fist bump. All right, guys, I hope you all had a great week of running. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.